Certainly we're excited again to be able to come before you on another Sunday morning. God has been so good to us. He's brought us all week long. Ain't nothing that we've done so good or so kind to deserve it, but because of grace yes. and because of mercy, yes, we stand here again before you. Thank you, thank you Lord. For no shape, no form, no fashion, but we come to give him glory because we know that he's worthy of it. Yes, he is worthy. Who is like the Lord? Well, if we search, we can't find nobody who can stand in comparison. Nobody can do what he does. And I come to tell you to be not this way, whatever be the time. God will take care yes, will. of you. Yes, Look to the hill this morning from when coming your help and know that all of your help it comes from the Lord. Yes. Truly God is worthy to be praised. Yes, he is. From the rising of the sun yes. until the going down of the same sin he's worthy yes, he is. to be praised. Hallelujah. And we come to give the glory this morning. Yes. And one of the reasons we come to give the glory is because one of these Sunday mornings you're going to look around for us. And we may have been checked out here. Yes, but it's okay because early in the morning, there's going to be a great reunion to see when we get home. But while we're here, we're going to open up our mouths, we're going to lift up our hands, our hearts, our spirits, and our voices to give God glory. God, we thank you so much, so. But you have not, first of all, God, you ain't given us what our sins have deserved. You look beyond our faults and you supplied every one of our needs. God, there's often times me and Sister Tisa brag about how you open doors that we ain't even got. That you're making ways that they ain't even asked you to. I'm so grateful for you being an all knowing God. I ask you for some things and you know I don't need them. Well, they're, they're not beneficial for my life, so you hold back, but I would call the blessing. The blessing is you're holding it back because I don't need it. Because you know all things, God, I ask that you would just search this morning through living rooms and through kitchens and through bedrooms and just bless God. Your arms are longer than mine. Your eyes can see further than mine can. So it ain't what I know, but it's what you know, God. Somebody heart is troubled this morning. They need you to be a heart fixer. Somebody's mind is confused. I'm glad to know that you're still a mind regulator. Bless us, oh God. And as our pastor comes to proclaim your word, God, I ask that you would just give him a word. That would just pierce our hearts this morning. Somebody be purged this morning, oh God. Nobody can do it like you. It's still by your blood. And it's still by your word. And there's still power in your name. You said whenever we need you, we can call you. Got somebody really do need you now. Don't forget about us, oh God. We come as an empty picture before a poor fountain asking for overflow. Bless us with your spirit. That as we go into worship, that you call that overflow in our hearts. And God will give you glory for it. We don't take credit. We don't boast. And we don't brag. And if we are going to boast the brag, it's going to be about you and what you're still qualified and able to do. Bless us, oh God, with your spirit because we can't do anything in and of ourselves. And God will be ever careful to give you glory now. Yes. Go with us and stand by us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, Father
the church that meets at their house, greet my dear friend, Eponidas, who was the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ and my dear friend Stachys, 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 I'm sorry. And greet Apelles, whose fidelity to Christ has stood the test. Greet those who belong to the household of Astrobolus. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet those in the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, those women who work hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Perseus, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who has been a mother to me too. I want to talk about on this Mother's Day, a mother to me too. In this chapter 16, Paul pauses after dealing with us through all of the doctrinal information that comes from the book of Romans. And now he's pausing and taking a moment to greet those whom have been impactful in his life. Paul goes and runs down a litany of names. He shares them with us in a manner wherein he, we see his appreciation for all that they have done. It is, it is, it is, it is incumbent upon me, beloved sisters and brothers, to remind us that we must need understanding that oftentimes when we look at the life of Paul, we're prone to honor Paul and forget the many people who have helped him and to make his ministry possible. Thanks be to Paul that he sets the example. Never forget the bridges that brought you over. Never forget the ones whose shoulders upon which you stand. Never forget those who have paved the way and allowed you a safer, smoother terrain to follow in in order that you might reach your destination. Although I only read, read verses 1 through 13, in verse 22, Paul goes on to give a big thank you to Gaius. And he gave uh, Gaius a thank you because it was Gaius that gave Paul a place to live and work. In verse 23, he gives a uh, mention to Phoebe, who carried out, completed the letter to Rome and made sure its delivery was made. Now listen, what we have to understand as a result of Paul's greetings is that nobody in God's family is unimportant. Nobody's insignificant. It does not matter what the role you play, the reality is that what you do is impactful in a positive manner upon the totality of the body of Christ. You never know what kind word you speak to a child as he walks down the street that will make him believe that there's something better, bigger, and brighter for his future. You never know, it could be just a kind word or just a deed of affection that can give life to people who otherwise would know it. Paul calls the list, and I thank God as we look at this list, in particular as we are focused upon a Mother's Day, that we look, there are nine women in this chapter in whom name Paul calls. He calls the name of Phoebe, the name of Priscilla. He calls Junia and 
other names that are mentioned in this text. But when you get down to verse 31, you will see that there is another woman who is highlighted, whom name has not been called. In verse 13, we see Paul in his continuation of greetings. He says, listen, greetings are to Rufus and his mother, who is like a mother to me. That leapt out to me, that brief moment of Paul acknowledging the mother of another, not his biological mother, not the one who gave him birth, not the one whom womb he resided in for nine months, it, not the one who cared for him as an infant and cared for him as a toddler, but here's the mother of another brother that has impacted Paul's life so much that Paul paused in his accolade-giving moment and his greeting and salutations just to say, and to his mother, a mother to me also. Listen, beloved, I wanted to expand out of the box of Mother's Day and not just reside in the appreciative moments and the sharing of kind words as it relates to biological mothers as we should often and not just on a day but every day show our love for the one who carried us not only the one who carried us but also the one who cared for us the one who brought us up the one who nurtured us and met our needs. And I thank God that as we look even today and over the last few, few days uh, in our social media profile pictures, people are putting mama's face in the place of their own. Many of them are with bright smiles. Others of us with a tear running down the face because the pictures are not contemporary, nor are they in from yesterday, but some of them are from yesteryears because our mothers are no longer here. But I suggest to you, beloved, thanks be to God that in the midst of it all that we celebrate our mothers, we honor them that rock the cradle because the reality is that those that rock the cradle has an impact on the way the world shall be. Those who nurture us in our neonatals, in our, in our situations of life and growing up, we come to understand that these are the ones who have the impact on us. Can I be honest, transparent, and truthful with you? I have four children. They all love me. They call me daddy affectionately. They hug me. And when my sons and daughters and I ever it began to part ways from one another or hang up the phone from one another, even before I can say it, they will say, love you, daddy. But I am under no illusion that no matter how good of a father I may be, a provider I have been, a spiritual counselor that I desire to continue to be in their life, the reality is uh, the affection that they have towards me pales in comparison to what they feel about their mother. Their mother is the moon by night and the sun by day. Their mother is the one that taught them the skills of taking different ingredients and putting it together and making a meal. Their mother is the one that wiped tears and put spit from her tongue onto their boo-boos and let them know that they would be all right. It's their mother that put them and held them in the breast of her love and reminded them that they would be all right. So I'm under no illusion, nor am I jealous. I am grateful that my children have a mother whom they can love without embarrassment, reservation, hesitation, reluctance, or despair. Thanks be to God for mothers. But can I go a little further? Watch this here. When we look at this here, we see Paul pauses in verse 13 and greets Rufus. 
Rufus may not mean anything to you, but let me give you a little backdrop of who Rufus is. Rufus is the son of Simon the Cyrene. You know Simon. Simon is the fella in whom carried Jesus' cross the last few moments of the way as he approached Galgunther's hill. <clears throat> Simon the Cyrene, he is the one that, that made sure that when the cross was too heavy for Jesus to bear, he for it himself. And I tell you, I like that, beloved, because there's a song we sing. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. There's a cross for you and for me. That Simon shows us what it means to carry the burden of another. That Simon, sir, a Cyrene, shows us what it means to step up and fill the gap of responsibility and help lift the burden off of another. That Simon, can I suggest to you, beloved, that when we look at this Rufus, we don't know too much about Rufus, but what we do know, that we know his father's track record. But thanks be to God, even though his mother's name is not mentioned, there's a whole lot we can see in his mother, watch this here, that we must need grasp hold of. First of all, we see that Rufus's mother is a cultivating mother. She's a cultivating mother. What does it mean to cultivate something? It doesn't mean to just grow it <clears throat> nor give it birth, but it means to develop it and prune it to make sure that it is what it needs to be. I wish I had some help in this house if we're going to be effective in the things of God. Thank God for the other mother who was a mother to us too because when we look at Rufus and his mother's relationship, we see that there's something in her cultivation because somewhere along the line, Paul has interacted with Rufus and has some encounter whereby Rufus has shown himself to be a brother beloved. I wish I had some help in here. Can you, can you, can you, can you, can you grasp this with me as we look together at this mother? She's a cultivator. She nurtures, not just nurture in a generic sense, but she nurtures not only not only does she nurture, she cultivates in a particular way where her child carries on the legacy of his father. I wish I had some help in here. But can we look at this text and let's push it a little further. I promise I won't be long. I know you got children that have been vaccinated. Now they're ready to come home and hug mama. But while they're on the way and while they're getting here, can I just give you another further to push this thing? When we look at it in the context of Paul's statement, we know that she is not just limited to the cultivation of her own children but she has enough love that overflows into somebody else's. Paul says she's like a mother to me too. Can I suggest to you beloved, a true loving mother has enough love that goes beyond her own biological children. She learns how to love somebody else. Can I pull for the moment and thanks be to God. I say this on a regular basis to my sister-in-law. Never had children from her own womb. But as a result of her being a loving, compassionate, mother-like person, she knows how to love the children that her husband have to the point that every Mother's Day, not only does the children recognize her, but the children's mothers say, thank God for your input. I wish I had some, women, some women people in here that will celebrate with us uh, those mothers who are mothers to us too. Thanks be to God. Those mothers to those mothers who are mothers to us too. Those who have cultivated us. Those who have loved us and met us where we were. Some of us uh, only had an outlet when we went to their house. They knew that there may have been particular problems in our home, but what they did is never criticized. In other words, they cultivated even us as they cultivated their children. When they set a plate for Johnny, they set a plate for us too. 
when they got ready to go and buy something at the store, they bought something for us too. When Johnny went in the refrigerator, he couldn't get just for, for, for him. He had to get it for us too. I wish I had some help on this thing today because we look at it that this woman was a woman that was effective in not only cultivating the life of our own, but she learned how to love, teaches us the example of loving somebody else. I close in a moment. But as I close, we look at this here. Somebody said, Pastor, that's not all in the text. But when I look at this through the lens of life's experience, I am a beneficiary of those who love me despite the fact they didn't give birth to me. And there are some of you listening to me today. Don't forget your bonus mother. Pick up the phone, call, and say, I appreciate you for what you've done. That's not taking anything away from your mother, but what it is, is it's a bonus. It is an add-on. It's some extra um. And the truth is, if mama's honest, it takes a village to raise a child. When we look at this here, Paul says simply, Rufus and his mother, who was like a mother to me too, she cultivated him. She cared for me. And as a result, she helped me, watch this here, to accomplish my ministry. We don't know her name. We don't know her name. Paul didn't mention it. But what we do know is her ministry. Because somewhere along the line, she did something that would allow her, as Paul goes back through memory lane of all those who have assisted him, to call and say, like a mother to me too. Beloved, I thank God that as we celebrate this Mother's Day, sisters, I know that some of you were barren in your womb, could not give birth to your children, but that does not make you less of a mother than anyone else. Because mothers are not just denoted based upon from what comes from their womb. Mothers are, watch this here, known for what comes from their hearts. And so when we learn to love one another, when we learn to have that kind of love, that not only our children, but others' children can look back on you and say, and to his mother, who was a mother to me, to. That's the blessing that we hope for. That's the blessing that we ask God for. And I thank you, Philippians, because I stand here today as a person who can testify that I am the beneficiary of mothers, of others who was like mothers to me too. Right. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he smile upon you. Happy Mother's Day and give you peace. As we get ready to leave, let us not forget that on the next two weeks we will be using pre-recorded worships. Please listen, that doesn't mean go somewhere else. They'll be from a year or so ago. Some of you will have forgotten it'll remind you. Um, and so we want you to listen to it. We're preparing to come back in. We will be giving more information online for the first Sunday in June. We are working on the numbers, meeting with uh, science and doctors to make sure we do it the right way. And so also we want to make sure that we are blessing one another and not hurting one another. So as you get ready to leave, make sure you bring your tithes into the storehouse, that there might be meat in the house, that the ministry might go forward, that God's work will prevail even in the midst of this world. And let me say this here, if you do not have a church home, please feel free. You can stop by here by letting our deacons and I here, they know how to, 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 to give you uh, the Roman road and tell you the plan of salvation. You can come in person or you can inbox us or you can call us at the church. 419-229-1441. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you. So...
God bless you.